I have given up hope on this coming to a conclusion. It's not going to bring her back, I know this, but I would like to know who did this. Was there a reason? Was it a random act? Was it a revenge act? 32 years after the disappearance and death of 10-year-old Linda Weldy, the list of suspected killers has ebbed and flowed. Uh, the challenges are, there are so many people um, that want to help. There are so many leads to go on and every lead that came up just kind of ran into a dead end. And as time has passed, that list has also been narrowed, with family and investigators all coming up with their own theories. I'm thinking it's a possibility, but it's not 100%. One of the names on Karen Egolf's list, Linda's mother, is a suspected serial killer named Larry Hall. He was into the Civil War reenactments, and he was in the area at that time. That's, that's the only reason why I haven't dropped him off the list completely is because over at the, um, the museum here in Laporte, they do Civil War reenactments. Hall was convicted on federal kidnapping charges from 1993. He was sentenced to life in prison. And while he's admitted to and been suspected of the abductions and murders of young girls, he has never been convicted of murder. We pretty much put Larry Hall to rest that he did not commit this crime. That's Al Williamson with the Indiana State Police. He has worked on the Weldy case for nearly 20 years. What do you think about the Larry Hall linkage? We've pretty much vetted out Larry Hall. Uh, Larry Hall professed to take credit for a lot of crimes that he did not do, this being one of them. Uh, our last information was that Larry Hall said he did not do this crime. Uh, I've worked other homicides that Larry Hall said he committed and he, he did not commit. Larry Hall liked to, uh, again, he liked to take credit for something he didn't do. He liked to be famous for homicides, for murders. I don't know why he, he did, but that was just what he wanted to do. And anytime there's an unsolved crime in the areas that he maybe lived or traveled, he took credit for those. Have you run into something like that before? I just ran into somebody uh, three or four weeks ago that sent a letter in regards to a cold case homicide. Former St. Joseph County Metro Homicide Commander, now cold case investigator, Tim Corbett. And this guy actually told us, you know, I wrote letters to everybody because I wanted to get a new trial on another case. You usually don't have a whole lot of the stranger danger type thing where I'm snatching you up off the street and doing something. I don't think you're usually going to have somebody that goes from no criminal activity to killing a child and perhaps a sexual offense or something like that. This is somebody that has precursors in their background. I find it hard to believe, but not impossible, that somebody went from no criminal activity to something of a heinous nature like that. Something like a gang, perhaps. One of the suspicions is this guy called Eskimo. And he was a member of the Sinners Motorcycle Gang. Karen's boyfriend at the time, now her husband, Robert Egolf, was in the process of joining the Sinners in the mid-1980s. They had asked Robert to join the motorcycle gang. And uh, after being a probation, in probation for a while, he decided that this is not the path he wanted to take. And he turned his vest in. Karen and Robert say a member called Eskimo was not happy about that. It's a very good possibility that she had been taken and murdered to get back at Robert for not joining. Robert would not talk on camera, but told me his theory, saying Eskimo passed away a couple of years after Linda was killed. He said Eskimo suspiciously drowned. He believed members of these sinners killed the biker for breaking a code of violence against children. However, that's not what we found happened. After hours of research, I tracked down Eskimo's obituary from 1995. His real name is Oliver Peake. According to his obit, he passed away in his house. His family tells me he had a heart attack. Motorcycle Club, the Sinners. Sinners. Karen claims that this was something that they pitched to investigators and it was ignored. It was not ignored, it was, it was looked into. Um, the sinners were around at that time. Uh, we have different leads that led that direction and, and, and they were looked into, uh, but no, nothing substantiated them or a motive why would the sinners want to do this to a 10-year-old girl? That's, 
that's not something they would do. The guy who they who they believe could have done it um, in that motorcycle club ended up dead a couple years later. Right. Their theory is, well, the club took care of him because he went outside of their code. Right. And we, we can't substantiate that. Today, investigators believe the killer is much closer to home. You always look at the inner circle first, close, close family members, friends, acquaintances like that. I think that it's more likely that when a case like this with a child, it's somebody who can do that child. If I'm a betting person, yes. I think that's somebody that's comfortable with, with their surroundings, somebody that's comfortable with being around that child, somebody that's uh, that knows a little history, could be very close to the situations. But honestly, from what I'm hearing by the questions you're asking, sounds to me like they have the answer, they just need a little bit more.